Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you ready to receive the word of the Lord? Yesterday was awesome. I couldn't sleep. And I pray that you enter into your destiny. The word of the Lord will realign you into your destiny. Amen. Papa is in the house. Praise God. We are extremely honored to have him here. Praise God. It, it's only God who can do this. Amen. Hallelujah. But it is only God who can do this. And Papa, we honor you for taking time and to be a blessing. And the heart of the Father, he wants to bless us. Amen. And I want you to open up your spirit and take as much as you can. And let's do the intro and we'll put Papa on. Red of Life Ministries, Bristol. Breakout Conference 2017. He is an astute intellectual, a loyal friend, a father to many, and above all, a loving husband. The General Overseer of the Maker's House Chapel International. Oh, my music ministry is still suffering, but, but give me time. The wheels are still turning. Uh, that business is struggling, but, 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 but give me time. The wheels are still turning. Ghana is not doing well, but, but give Ghana time. The wheels are still. Africa is not, but, but give us time. The wheels are still turning. The same God who is able to change things and bring glorious manifestations to pass will bring His word to pass over your life. Breakout Conference 2017. With a resounding round of applause and a standing ovation, shall we welcome our speaker for tonight, Dr. Michael Boyadin Yemeche. Amen. Um, I don't know whether you are excited or you are just somewhere in the middle, but put your hands together. Let us celebrate the Lord our God, the King of Kings. Um, all right, that celebration was to the clergy. Um, I know you, when you are celebrating your pastors, you clap. And, and, and from where I am coming from, we get confused. When you are clapping, is, is a big, we use clap for, the, for many things. We use it to kill mosquitoes as well. And so sometimes you have to be able to um, um, separate the one you use to kill mosquitoes from the one you are using to really praise. And so for you not to confuse me, shall you please clap your hands and let's give God. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. Let us celebrate the Lord, our, our God. Amen. Oh, I'm super excited to be here. Yesterday we had an awesome time in the presence of God, but I strongly believe that because he takes us from glory to glory, he will lift up um, his countenance upon us. He will cause us to see another manifestation of divine grace again today. Amen. I want to take time out to celebrate the set man of the house, um, the angel of the house, a great man that I've known, a man that is very humble. I, I've, I've met many pastors. Some of them easily get puffed up. But, but this is a man of humility. Um, how many of you can testify that your pastor is a humble man? So that I know I'm not alone in this. Let us celebrate Pastor Eric and Lady Gifty. The gifts God has given to us. Um, but if your Bible is here, could you please lift it up and say, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. I will become what it says I can become. I will go where it says I can go. I will achieve what it says I can achieve. Slap your chest and say, I am a believer. You can do it again. Say, I am a believer. 
If the Bible is yours, could you please turn to the book of St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 5. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 5. Mm. St. Mark, Mark's Gospel, chapter number 5. And by the way, the choir is amazing. I love you, okay? You, you sing so well. I love you. You know, in our church, for you to join the music ministry, you go through audition and probation for six months. But I think that with what you guys are doing, you have easy passage. Because you are so good. The people who are in the queue to join our choir, they are about 200 people. And you have to be on probation for six months. Not just of vocal strength, but of character. Because we have so many gifted people who are rotten character-wise. And we don't want our pulpits to be soiled by gifted but rotten people. Unfortunately, that is where the churches we find ourselves. We have pastors who are gifted but rotten. The Holy Spirit is, is interesting as a person because he comes in with a noise but goes quietly. So there are so many people who had visitations of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit left them long ago and yet they can tell. And so we have people who have missed the oil and yet they still think they are with the oil. And that is Samson said, let me shake myself like other times. And yet he didn't know that the spirit had left him. And so it is possible for the spirit to leave a man without a man's knowing. It's very possible. That once, an anoint, once upon a time, an anointed man will get up and say, that let me shake myself again and the oil won't be there. Because the Holy Spirit will leave quietly. I really pray that God will give us clues when we are missing it. Amen. Mark's Gospel chapter number 5. Have you found it? Yes, it's in Mark's Gospel chapter number 5. If you found it, we read from the verse number 25. From the thundering diction of the King James Bible, we read from the verse number 25. Mark 5 from the number 25. If you found it, say, I have it. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 5, from the verse number 25, reading from the thunder and diction of the King James Bible, it reads, And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse, when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed out of the plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the presence and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng in thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, My daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague amen let us pray heavenly father we know that the grass will wither the flower will fade but your word will abide forever we pray that give us a word that works oh god anoint these lips of clay make it an instrument of a blessing to somebody's life oh god to the end when we've seen your visitations when you've given us your ream when you spoke into us as individuals as persons oh god we will not hesitate to give you praise in jesus most mighty name we have prayed amen before you take your seats i want you to look for three people and tell them this is my time can you look for three people I want you to look for three people. I know that in England you are very, 
a lot of you are very conservative but look for somebody you've never met before um, break free from your conservatism look for somebody and tell the person this is your time I just want you to preach with me look for somebody be prophetic just a little bit and tell your neighbor neighbor this is your time Ca can you prophesy to somebody and tell the person neighbor this is your time look for somebody I want you to look for somebody, somebody that you've never met before. Do not be intimidated by the eye extensions, the weave ones, the bald head or the makeup or the eye shadows or whatever it is. But look at the person and say, neighbor, this is your time. This can only be your time. This is your time. Amen. I'm excited to be here this, this, this evening and... Um, I'm really sure. Please take your seats if you've done that. This is your time. I believe that. Um, to your left and to your right, look at that neighbor and say, it is your time. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, it is your time. They might not really know who you are. That's why they are not receiving that word. But tell that neighbor, neighbor, uh, this is your time. I'm speaking the mind of God to you right now. It is your time. Amen. Professor P. Wembley, one of the professors of, um, of counseling, um, right, once said, and I quote, that the transitory human redemptive process only happens when you see that change is no longer voluntary but mandatory. He said that you only experience change in your life when you see that change is not going to come to you on a silver platter, but you go after change and you change it. You become the change agent. You become the one that influences or induces the change. You don't wait for change to happen to you. He said that the transitory human redemptive process only happens when you see that change is no longer voluntary, but mandatory. People who are able to get changes in their lives are people who won't sit for things to happen. They happen to things. Can I rewind and press play? They don't wait for things to happen to them. They rather happen to things. They go after what they want and they take it. The Bible says from the time of John the Baptist, even until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent don't receive, they take we have so many people who are waiting for receptions and not people who are ready to do the taking they won't give me they don't want to take it now maturity in the faith is judged on different layers there are many things that will help you to understand how mature a group or an individual is and one of the things is your ability to pursue now the bible says that after david had come back from his pursuit, he came back to meet that Ziklag had bent. They had taken everything. He went to God because people were after him. They wanted to stone him. They wanted to kill him. And David went to God. He took the Urim and the Thummim and went to God and said, Shall I pursue? Because at that point, David knew that for him to get back what had been taken from him, angels were not going to be deployed to get it, them back and bring it to him. He knew that he had to pursue. So he went to God and said, God, I know you are the God all by yourself. I know you can do many things for me. You can, you can, you can cause things to happen when you want them to happen. But shall I pursue? And God said, yes, you shall. Uh, you shall pursue and when you pursue you shall overtake and when you overtake you shall recover and so for you to recover what the enemy has taken from you is starts from pursuit Amen. we have so many people who want God to give things to them but they are not ready to pursue the things God has given to them no 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 God wants to give to them I once read um, from an ancient philosopher he said a lot of the generation and even in those days he said that I'm, I'm really wondering what he would have said or written if he was living in our times he said so many young people are itching for things they can't scratch probably let me rewind and press play he said they are itching for things they can't scratch young men want to buy um, a Bugatti Veyron and yet they are not ready to scratch you want to be, um, you want to own a million pound house and you are not ready to scratch. 
For you to get to where God wants you to get to, you have to be in pursuit. Your change can only be seen. Your transitory redemptive process will only happen when you see that change is not voluntary. It won't come to you, but when you see that it's, when you see that it's a must, it's, it's either now or never. Until you bless me, I won't let you go. The account of Mark's gospel, I love the book of Mark for obvious reasons. Uh, Mark um, paints an action Jesus picture. The portrait of Jesus that you see in the book of Mark is a man of action. Not a man who is interested in many details, but he goes straight to the point and he makes things happen. A man of action. So he starts from the chapter number five that Jesus um, had gone over the seas and had met a man that has been inflicted by demons. And this man, the Bible says that when the man had seen Jesus, the demons spoke and said, have you come to destroy us before our time? And you read that account and it's interesting because this man had never met Jesus before, but the demons had. That is to tell you that when it comes to the omnipotence and omnipresence of God, it transcends borders and territories. You can be here and pray for somebody to, say, to be saved in India. You can be in England and pray for somebody to be touched in Pakistan. Because although you are not there personally to evangelize, you can send prayer there. Can I build my points gradually? I'm excited this evening. So, this man had never met Jesus before, but the spirits that were in him, the legions, what he was possessed with, had met Jesus before. And he said, son of David, son of God, Jesus, you, have, have you come to destroy us before our time? Because they knew that Jesus was going to destroy them anyway. They were only mindful of the time. Check the account. The destruction was not a problem. The time was. They knew that there is time for everything. That is why when you happen to be in the commonwealth of faith, you can't lose faith. Because there is time that God has allotted for your elevation. Amen. Ready? You ready for takeoff? And Jesus had met these guys these demons through this man and Jesus um, when they asked that Jesus did not answer and they added a follow-up question they said could you please direct us cast us rather into the swine Jesus obliged but watch the test after the man was saying the man went back to Jesus and said Jesus now I am saying can I follow you I want to follow you I want to be an ambassador I want to be one of your disciples I want to go with you Jesus looked at him and said, no, you don't understand why I'm here. Um, I came here to, set, uh, to, to, to liberate and to set the captives free. But it is not that once I set you free, you come and follow me. No, that's not it. But once I set you free, I make you an ambassador to your community. Yes. Jesus said, don't follow me. Go back to your community and be a walking billboard. So that when people see you, when, when they look at you, they can tell that this was the same person that was mad and yet he has been made well by Jesus. I pray for you that God will make you a walking billboard that wherever you go, people can look at you and see the almighty power of God at work in your life. You see, the problem is that a lot of us want to stay in church, but God wants his power to be seen on the street. Let me try. Um, we want to after we are tongue talking spirit filled power baptized and we are casting out devils we, we, we want to dance and, and celebrate in church and break dance in church you do break dancing and crack in church but Jesus was saying to him what I've done in your life is not for the church it is for the world 
He said, I want you to follow, I want to follow you, Jesus. Jesus said, no, 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 you don't get it. Go back to your people. Once they see you, they will see my power at work in your life. I really pray in 2017, as you journey through life, that God will make you a walking billboard. That when people see you, they can see the power of God at work in your in your life. He said, I, you, 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 you have to be a walking billboard. You have, when people see you, go and show yourself to your people. Jesus was saying that my miracle is supposed to be on display. What I'm about to do in your life, you shouldn't shelve it. Rather put it on, on display. So that when people see you, they can tell that something significant has happened to you. And that is what God is going to do with your life. That when things begin to happen, the world will know that something significant has happened to you. The man did not need a town crier. The man did not need an announcer. The man did not need BBC to do a full coverage on him. He just needed to walk about. Because the people knew that this is a violent man. A man that has to be in chains. And yet, a violent man is now in suit. He doesn't need BBC coverage. People will now know that for this thing to happen to this man, something significant must have happened to him. And I pray that what God will do in your life will be like that. That everybody around you will know that something significant. Let me hurriedly get out of my introduction. That's not what I came to preach to you about. But check the account. Jesus had had done this to this man hopeless situation people had given up on him and Jesus visited him it means that when it comes to the visitation of God it does not need parliamentary approval Um, he doesn't have to take it to the floor of parliament for them to have intellectual debate because you see when it comes to (laughs) um, human thinking they know which people qualify and which people do not let me sound this word of caution when God decides to bless you there are people that are going to give a thousand and one reasons why you shouldn't get it you are not pretty enough why is she the one that is getting married look at me I have everything put together when it comes to the visitations of God it is not about who has put what together it's about who the Lord has decided to visit and to bless. And so when God decides to bless a man, he doesn't need parliamentary approval. He doesn't need human debate. Paul said, when I heard of the heavenly calling, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Because anytime you confer with flesh and blood, they will give you an answer in the negative. Why do you want to do that? Apply common sense. Common sense application is for common people. Because the sense is so common that common people can exhibit it. I'm not saying when God saves a soul, he, uh, God will never save your soul for you to lose your mind. So once your soul is saved, it doesn't mean that your mind is lost. God saves your soul, you have your mind intact, but you don't meddle with your mind in common things because you are living a transcendent life. A life of transcendency does not um, navigate its way in the corridors of commonness. You can be common in your pursuit of greatness. That is why God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Because the wise is adjudged to be commonsensical. And you've heard it. Common sense is common to common people. And not all common people have common sense. Because although it's common, it's uncommon. (laughs) Let me try to drag you. So I I don't lose you. I'm still building an introduction to my sermon. Are you following? Jesus had met this man in a hopeless situation visited him and said go out there and put yourself on display after jesus had done that 
the bible says jesus had had an invitation to go and minister to another person who was of high repute in the community when jesus was going a woman without invitation a woman without any proper social standing it was not she was not a member of the royal family no state protocol there was no motorcade no siren there was nobody to bring her introduction to jesus the bible calls her a certain woman i've heard many people say that the woman the, the name of the woman is not mentioned and she was called a certain woman because she was not important but if you've ever written before anytime a writer um, uses anonymous characters it suggests inclusiveness anonymity suggests inclusiveness it means that what the writer is saying that if there is no name there put your name there a certain woman because a time will come that it will be required you will be required to put your name there anonymity will suggest inclusiveness i want to start preaching now anytime a name is not mentioned god wants you to put your name god knew that a time will come that you will have something in common with a woman and so if the a name of the woman was placed there you think the bible was talking about that specific woman but it's for everybody a woman without invitation a woman that nobody even knew a woman with without any kind of reputation a woman of no repute or substance in the community and the bible says and a certain woman with an issue you know that when you have issues you don't look for men you look for god the reason why the prop the, the woman's problem stayed was because the bible says when she had issues she was always going from one man to the other but you see the arm of flesh shall fail you anytime you get around people and you tell people your problems the only thing people can do when you tell them your problems is to empathize with you and after they've empathized with you they go about talking about you oh you, you, you see that lady you, you think she's all cute oh no forget about her she's in she's in a mess she can't hold down a man. That guy, <laughs> she comes to church and, she, and he's dancing, throwing his hands all up. He's never been able to hold down a job. Because people can only empathize and cannot change your situation. Anywhere you find yourself as you journey through life, please understand this. People can only join the pity party but they can't change your story for your story to change is a personal decision not a collective bargain for you to get to work <laughs> for you to get to where god wants you to get to it is not a communal effort it's a personal effort destiny is so idiosyncratic that leaving your destiny in the hands of people is always going to backfire in your face people are very self-centered even when you think they are with you they are thinking about themselves even when you think they are with you they are thinking what do i stand to gain probably let me rewind and press play the man called david was going into battle went to see his brothers and the first thing he did was he asked them a oh boy what are they saying will be the reward for the one who killed this giant he was not thinking about saving israel he was thinking about personal satisfaction this guy wants to kill people and if you have what it takes to kill him please go ahead and kill him but his question was what is the reward 
It tells you that in any pursuit, people's aspirations are factored in. People will not, will not just go because they want to go. They go because they have interest. One of the anchors of the American United States foreign policies is that they don't have permanent allies. They only have permanent interest. They are foreign policy programs. They don't have permanent allies. They only have permanent interest. And so, UK will remain their ally as long as UK serves their interest. That's right. The day you choose not to serve their interest, that allegiance is quashed. Almost instantaneously. Because it's not about, it's about an interest. And that's the same thing. Your interest and another man's interest might not be in the same on the same wavelength. Now, because of that, you cannot entrust your destiny in the hands of another. You know, I have problems when I hear people going to pastors for pray for me. I, man of God, I, I, I get sickened to the bone. Pray for me. Oh, man of God, pray for me. Really? Are you serious? Because you see, maybe the man of God is having issues that you don't know. You see, a lot of people are leading house bleeding. They are bleeding and leading at the same time. And so sometimes you don't see that the leader is bleeding. Because they put up a facade that makes them appear very strong and yet they are hemorrhaging. You have no idea what they go through. Do you know that all the disciples of Jesus thought that Jesus was a superman? A big man. A strong man. A man that cannot be touched. He had no pain. He was strong. Jesus went on the mountain and said, Father, you know, these guys, they don't know. <laughs> but if it's possible, let this cup. <laughs> they had no idea what the man was going through. When they came and Jesus woke them up, they got up thinking that this man, when anybody comes with just a snap of the finger, he would just extinguish every fear. The man had to deal with his fears. Sometimes the one you want to pray for you is dealing with something that you don't know. The guys were sleeping knowing that Jesus was praying for them, but through all that time, Jesus never even uttered a word of prayer for them. They were sleeping and snoring. Jesus was about himself. Don't leave your hands in the life of another man. <laughs> you see, the reason why, again, um, in our part of the world, a lot of pastors have taken advantage of the weak and the vulnerable is because of that same kind of mentality. That the pastor is placed on a certain pedestal. That we forget that they are human. Yeah. One day I was having, uh, there was a pastor's conference that I was speaking therein. And um, let me time myself properly. And um, I, I called a gentleman who happened to be the armor bearer of, of a pastor. And I, I said to the armor bearer, I asked the armor bearer, um, do you pray at night? He said, yes, but I don't pray much. You know, my pastor prays for me. I said, hallelujah, I, I think I want to use you as a case study. So I, I picked him up and I tell him, come, follow me. Um, I said, you said your pastor prays for you so you don't pray much. He said, oh yeah, he was saying it confidently. So I asked him, how many kids does your pastor have? He said, five. I said, which means your pastor is a very busy man. What if... In your time of adversity, your pastor is busily making babies. What happens to you? Then his face dropped. What I was trying to let this young man know is that things are not as you always think. Maybe the time you are thinking your pastor is praying for you, your pastor is busily doing something else. Maybe not making babies, but watching football. (laughs) 
I think my introduction has taken too much time. So, so the Bible says that this woman, without any kind of background, nobody knew her. And this woman was able to go back to Jesus and go to Jesus. And the woman, the Bible says that when the woman saw that Jesus was passing, the woman said to herself, that if I can only touch by the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. You see, what the woman was doing, and I want to give you three things. The woman did three things, and I want to preach from there. Psychologists will tell you that never talk to yourself. Psychologists, those of you that have done clinical psychology, and those of you that are psychologists, psychology, um, psychologists will tell you never talk to yourself. Because it's a sign that you are going... You are losing your mind. Never talk to yourself. Other school, another school of thought say that you can talk to yourself, but make sure when you talk to yourself, you don't answer. Okay, so one school of thought is saying, don't. Another school of thought is saying, you can. But when you ask yourself questions, don't answer. Because the moment you answer, it means you're already off. <laughs> But interestingly, I don't agree with any of them because I strongly believe that every point in your life, you have to get to a point where you ask yourself questions. You talk to yourself. You sit yourself down and you say, you say to yourself that, and if I can, if I will be able to, you talk to yourself, you, you get your three favorite people together. You, yourself, and I. Your three favorite friends. Me, myself, I. You have to assemble that trinity and talk to the three of them. The Bible says, and the woman said to herself that if I can only touch the hem of his garment, then I can be made well. And so the first thing, the, the woman did three things, and I call it the three T's, the three T's, the three T's, and I want to talk to you from there. The first thing the woman did was that the woman talked because you see at every point you have to get to a point where you talk uh, most of us are dying in silence we are not talking there are issues and we are not talking about it i'm not saying talk about it with people because you see people can only only i said empathize with you and probably even gossip about your predicament but talk to yourself tell yourself i told you um, that that redemptive process will only begin when you see that change is mandatory when you get to a point where you tell yourself that this thing is mine and i'm going after it you talk to yourself that lord until you bless me today i will not let you you have to get to that point whereby you are able to talk to you i came to speak to somebody that may god awaken your spirit that you'll be able to see where god is sending you to and you can talk to yourself but the woman talked to herself the woman said if i can only touch but the hem of his garment i shall be made well so the woman knew that her wellness is contingent on her touching so for her to be made well she had to touch and so the woman first of all talked but that is not even a revelation because you saw that. Another layer is after the woman had talked to herself, she went to touch. How? And a lot of us, we've read the scripture. And anytime we read the scripture about this woman, the woman with the issue of blood, and the woman's issue had been there for 12 years, and we talk about the length of her problem, but the real problem in that test, the tension in that test, is not about the length of her issues, but the scope of her challenges. Because you see, it's not about the length of it. It's about the scope. Um, because there were not, medicine had not advanced. The longest time that somebody could have gone on with that kind of challenge or issue was 12 years. So the woman was at her wit and she knew that if it passes this year while she's hemorrhaging, there is no way she was going to survive it. And so she knew that and if I don't take it now, there is no way I'm going to get it again. And that is why I came to tell you that this is your time. Some of you, you know that you cannot wait for another year before a revelation and a breakthrough comes. And I pray that any breakthrough you are desiring or yearning for, may the Lord God of our, your many journeys come through for you and bring it to you speedily. Let me try to preach to you now. 
so the Bible says, and this woman, because her challenge, her problem, her situation, she's been through it so long, and it's, it's been so deep, that she knew that if she doesn't get a resolution at that time, she was going to die. What do you do? When you know that if you don't get it, that's the end of your story. What do you do that when you know that it's either now or never? The woman knew that if I don't get the miracle now, there is no way I'm going to survive the following season. And it's possible Jesus might not pass this way anymore. And when the woman had seen Jesus passing, I, I, I strongly feel and sense that what the woman was saying in herself is, Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. <laughs> Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling. And do not pass me. The woman knew that if you are passing this way, Jesus is passing this way. And if you are passing this way, I will not let you go until I see a change. I might not have an invitation but the last time I check to get something from God you don't need an invitation for the earth is the loss and the fullness they of the world and they that dwell therein he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flats who shall ascend to the hills and who shall dwell in his holy place he that has clean and pure heart has not lifted up his hands unto vanity neither has the person sworn deceitfully the Bible says he shall receive the blessings of the Lord and his righteousness from the God of his salvation therefore lift up your heads O ye gates and be lifted up we have a lasting doors and let the king of glory enter the ring who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord who is mighty in battle i came to speak to somebody any gate that has been shut before you may the lord open that gate for your life any door that has been closed may the lord go ahead of you the bible says he shall go ahead of you he shall make the crooked path straight he shall exalt valleys and bring low mountains I came to speak to somebody right now that let every gate that has been closed before you be open right look at somebody and say this is my time can I preach to you look at somebody and say neighbor this is my time say neighbor oh neighbor this is my time uh, the woman knew that for her to get through to Jesus she was risking being stoned because anybody according to the Levitical order, according to the Levitical order, dictates precepts, principles. If you are hemorrhaging, if a lady is in a period, if a lady is bleeding, and the lady knowingly, you know that you are bleeding and you touch anybody. You render the person unclean. If you touch more than one people, it's a deliberate act of, uh, of making sure that you desecrate. And not just the altars of God, but the people of God. And so they will stone you. The lady, the lady knew that these guys might want to take me out if they see that I'm hemorrhaging. And so let me go in from the back. Sometimes going in front, going through leadership might delay the process sometimes you don't even need the organist to strike the keyboard for you to get to the holies of holies to bring your petitions to god all that you know is that all that you have to do is to lift up your hands and say god i am coming as i am just accept me in your presence i i might be hemorrhaging but i know that if i can only touch the woman knew that if they had to catch her they were going to kill her and yet she could tell i told you yesterday that if you are really driven by the outcome the input will not be a challenge watch the test the bible says that and a woman had to, now understand this woman was very weak and because of that she there was no way she could bulldoze her way through very weak hemorrhaging for 12 years very weak how can she push people and say give me away the woman could only sometimes to get the miracle it might need you crawling in between legs of people sometimes people might stand in your way you have to find a way to go in between the legs of people and make sure you get what you really really watch the test and and i'll get you there very soon the bible says that and when the woman had gotten there the woman touched the hem of his garment 
and I've heard many people who are theologians talk about the hem and they talk about the garment they talk about it but you see in those days every every all of them every every and and I mean every every Jewish man will wear an outer coat called the talit and the talit underneath the talit will have little tassels called the zitzit and every zitzit is a representation of the word of God and so when the woman was going to touch the hem now the hem of the talit the hem of the talit is the zitzit the hem of the you see um, their prayer shawl and you have little tassels under the prayer shawl it's called the, the zitzit and so at the end of the talit what they wear is the zitzit and the zitzit is the word of God. The zitzits are joined together, which means that when the woman was touching Jesus, the Bible said touch the hem. It was not touching a garment. It was touching a word in the word. And so when the woman had met Jesus, the woman was touching a word. One of the words that I believe the woman touched was that I, he came to heal your diseases. The Bible says uh, he has taken your infirmities and your afflictions upon himself. Can I speak to somebody who is here? The Bible says by his stripes we are healed and so when the woman was touching the zizit the woman was touching a healing grace that comes out of the word i came to speak to you that may you touch a word that is specified for your proper situation anywhere you find yourself there is a word available let me rewind and help the woman did three t's the woman talked the second thing the woman did was that she touched. So she talked. She touched. What did the woman touch? Not a garment. Theologically, people think that it was a garment. But if you study history, you realize that that was a representation of the garment they wore. It represented the zizit, represented the word of God and so when the woman knew that at that point if she doesn't get healing she was going to die the woman touched the word that says you shall not die but live and declare the oracles of God the woman touched the word that says that uh, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly that does not sit in the seat of the scornful his delight is in the word of God and in the law he meditates day and night he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water his leaves shall shall not wither and whatever he does will the woman knew that he brought them out with silver and gold and there was no one feeble person amongst them the woman knew that what he was touching was that i will not die so when they were saying many things about the woman what the woman was touching is that no weapon formed or fashioned again can i speak to somebody right now no weapon formed or fashioned against me shall the, the, the woman was touching the woman was not only talking I've had many preachers uh, and the woman talked and touched the hem of his garment and immediately no the garment could not have brought healing because the garment was not made by Jesus himself yeah. and so if the garment was powerful then the tailor would have had people queuing up for healing yeah. in a shop yeah. it was not about the garment it was about two things the one wearing the garment number two what the tassel and the revelation she caught represented the woman was not going to touch the shoulder of jesus why didn't you touch his shoulder ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. because the god the bible says and his government shall be so when the woman was going what could have guaranteed her victory was touching government that was touching the shoulder of jesus the woman could have gone to Jesus and said, could you please lay hands? Because you see, to get miracle, it's not the hand laid, it's what you take. The woman talked. The woman touched the last tea the woman took. So she talks, she touches, and she takes. Uh, she talks, she touches, and she takes. Let me do it again. She talks, she touches.
touches and she takes. She did not wait for Jesus to confirm. She knew that once I am touching this, that is to mean that if you get the word of God and you run with the word, the word will bring you healing in itself. You don't have to wait for anybody to lay hands on you. Run with the word. I, am I talking to somebody in Bristol right now? May God grant you some power that his word over your life will come to pass. May the word of God over your life. The woman, woman talked. And when the woman had talked, the woman touched. What are you touching, young lady? I'm touching that they say of me there is no help for him in his God but thou O oh God you are a shield for me my glory and the lifter of my head what are you what are you touching what, what are you touching young man uh, you, 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 you don't know that, that, that things are bad you, you shouldn't be doing that what are you touching oh I am touching that silver and gold belongs to my God and if I touch that word and I run with that word he will make oasis in the desert oh, can I preach to you now I want to push it another layer so the woman talks then the woman touches then after the woman had touched the woman had to take it by force no waiting for confirmation for the time of the john the baptist even until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violent and the Violent shall not receive, but they shall take it. From today, may God give you the ability to take whatever the devil has stolen from you, whatever they have taken from you. May God give you the ability to go there and take it. Look at somebody and say, I'm taking it by force. Can you look for three people? Give them a high five and say, Neighbor, oh neighbor, I am taking it. No, come on, look for three people. Say, Neighbor. Oh neighbor, I am taking it. It is mine for the taking. Come on, look for somebody else and say, neighbor. Oh neighbor, it is mine for the taking. Say, I am taking it by force. From today, what they stole from your family, take it by force. What they stole from your ministry, may you take it by force. What they stole from your finances, may you take it by whatever they stole from you take it the woman did not wait to be given the problem is after we come to church men of god women of god after you've preached in church people touch the word but they stop at the touching stage the problem is the layer that a lot of us, our congregation, get stuck therein is the touch. A lot of people who when the man or the woman of God who is presiding over your soul, shepherding you and pastoring you, stands on the sacred altar and declares a word of prayer or prophecy over you. Most of us, we touch but we don't take. So we have a lot of pastors that are being frustrated and a lot of congregants that are also being frustrated. The frustration is double-edged because the pastor knows that I have prophesied over you. Things should change because God has given me the mandate and I, I know that I pray and God listens to me. Why is it that I have prophesied over you many times and things are not changing? And the, womb, the, the congregant is also saying, but my pastor has been praying for me every time, declaring, and I receive prophecy, and I receive prophecy, and yet things are not changing. Because they are all at the touching stage. At the touching stage, there is contact but not possession. 
The problem is, a lot of us make contact, but we don't possess. The Bible says, but upon Mount Zion, Zion, there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the sons of Jacob, they shall possess. You see, it is, it is a bit, um, philosophically, there is a tension in that test. Because you see, man of God, he's saying they shall possess their possessions. If it's already their possession, why are they possessing? Because they have to possess for that thing to be qualified as a possession. But why are you saying they would rather possess their possession? Because your possession is just a reference point. You have to possess to bring it into effect. Glory be to the God and our, uh, the God of our Father, uh, the, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us all spiritual blessings to enjoy and lifted us far above principalities and powers and made us joint heirs with Christ. And so, technically, although you are lifted far above principalities and powers, until you assume your heavenly role, you still fight with demons. So, anybody who continually prays against demons has not assumed his mandate yet. You see, how do you fight down if you are up? You are always fighting. And every time, every time, when even you, you dash your foot against a stone, you are binding. You are binding demons. Ah, oh, no, they have followed me here. I, they followed me here. They followed me here. And every time, and I bind and I lose. I bind and I lose. And I, I, you have been binding and losing, and these people are getting stronger. Because you see, the moment you operate in their level, they will beat you with experience. That is their domain. When the eagle gets on the ground and fights with the cobra, the cobra will kill it. That's right. When the eagle wants to defeat the cobra, it has to hold the cobra by its talons and take it up. The snake has no aerial experience. So when it's being flown up there, it loses oxygen, stability. It becomes dizzy. It can't even think. It wouldn't know when to strike. What I mean is that when you see that there are challenges, it means you have come to their level. Lift, change the turf. Lift it higher. If there are snakes, take them mid-air. They will be dangling for, for survival. That is the problem. We have a lot of people who are touching. But very few are taking. I'm telling you, you can be in church for all your life and still remain at the touching stage. Because to take is mandatory. The woman said to herself, if I can only touch, then I can have. So she knew that touching is just an initial stage. The Bible says that, and Jesus said, who touched me? Who took away from me without my permission? Because Jesus knew that somebody had caught a revelation. He knew that to get from God, you don't need a heavenly approval. You need just an alignment. To get from God, you need an alignment. You don't need a permission. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, alignment, seek my face, alignment, turn from their wicked ways, alignment, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. So healing and hearing is not the problem of God. The alignment is. Oh, Jesus. This is what God wants you to understand. It's not so much about the touching. People can touch. And we have a lot of people who have been touching all their life, but very few people Oh, my time. 
You know, I'm not through with my sermon, but I have to close my time. Jesus says, she's taken from me. She, something has left me. Jesus, you mean you have no control of what leaves you and what comes to you? Are you saying something can leave you without you allowing it to leave you, Jesus? What Jesus was saying is that the portals of divinity are always open through the keys or doors of faith. If you can touch knowing you shall receive, the heavens can't stop you. The heavens can never stop a man who knows where he's going and has aligned properly and is ready to receive from God. I know the guy said, Jesus, you right now you your your case is becoming some way. Multitudes throng in you, and all that you are saying is somebody touched me. People will be touching you. Jesus was saying you don't get it. There are a lot of people who are around, but very few are touching. People are making contact, but very few are taking. The woman did not just touch me bodily. The woman took something from me. May you not be one of the people who come to church just to add to the numbers, just to touch and be around, but be somebody who comes to God knowing that if I go to him, every good and every perfect gift coming from God, the giver of life in whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning, and if I can only go to him, I can take Please be outstanding. I, if I don't take time, I, I, I will preach all night. And, um, you know, I'm a talkative. And so, I'm a talkative. I don't know how many of you are ready to take, but look at somebody and ask the person, are you ready to take? Say, it's your time, but are you ready to take? Look at somebody and say, neighbor, it is your time, but are you ready to take? What answers are you getting? Yes. Is it positive? Yes. So look at that neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. It, is it is your time. But are you ready to take? Ready to take? Ah, hallelujah. So excited about what God wants to do. It's your time. But are you ready to take? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on hand, heaven's stable land. I am blessed that I have found. Lord, let my feet on. Lord, lift me up and let me stand oh, 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 oh. by faith on hand, hand. and then stay for
you heavenly father I, I want every right hand to be lifted if you're in this place just lift up your right hand we want to go before the throne in prayer we want to pray to the lord our god yes we want to go before him um, i don't know how many of you are ready to touch a word today i don't know which word you want to activate um, the lady was able to activate her healing I don't know a word that needs activation. Maybe you need something restored. The lady was hemorrhaging. She need her health back on track. But there are many people that are covering their pain with their makeup. Um, there are so many people who have been able to mask or put a veneer of wellness on what exactly they are going through and people can feel it but you see it's not about the people around you it's about you i don't think the woman was going about telling people i'm hemorrhaging please give me away she knew that it's about her and you have to get to the place where you know that it's about you yes and the moment you realize it's about you you are able to pursue overtake and recover you want to go before God. I, I really don't know what you want to touch and what you want to take. I'm not sure, but you know. Say, Lord Jesus, as I lift up my voice and as I begin to pray, let your word, O oh God, be activated in my life. The word of healing, the word of providence, the word of protection, let your word of elevation father be activated on my life your word of peace the bible says and your name is the prince of peace it means you can give me your god peace of mind peace at heart peace when i go out peace when i come in peace oh god in the city peace when i go out of the city wherever i find myself you can bring me peace activate your word over my life in the name of jesus let your word stand tall let your word be activated let there be your god manifestations of your word over my life in the name of jesus lift up your voice with me and begin to pray Come on, lift up your voice with me and begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your voice with me and begin to pray. Lift up your voice with me and begin to pray. Let there be activations. Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Come on, let your voice be lifted. Come on, let your voice be lifted up. Oh, you can pray if my people who are called by my name if they will humble themselves and pray if they will seek my face if they will turn from their wicked ways I will hear from heaven and I will heal their lands father let it be so oh God let it be so lift up your voice and begin to pray come on lift up your voice come on lift up your voice Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voice. Begin to pray. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voice. Hallelujah, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Yes, Lord. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to pray probably the last prayer. Um, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 37, most of you have read it before, the valley of the dry bones. How many of you have read it before? You can have read it before. All right. In the valley of dry bones, the Bible says that in God had given this man called Ezekiel a revelation and in the revelation he saw that the bones were dry and he used another adjective to qualify it he said and they were very dry sometimes you get to places where your case is not ordinary but it can be qualified <laughs> with an adjective we won't say you are broke we'll say you are very broke they don't say you are sick. We say you are very sick. You get to a time where we have to use an adjective to qualify your situation. And God spoke to this prophet and asked the prophet, Prof, shall these bones live? And the Bible says that he said unto God, I don't know. You are the only one who knows. God said you are making a mistake. The earth has been given to the sons of man. The sons of men for rulership and for dominion. The heavens is God's, but the earth is for man. That is why if we don't develop our world, the world will never be developed. God won't come here to construct roads. Because he has given earth to man. So God said unto him, that you are making a mistake. You are, you are expecting the heavens to do what humans are supposed to do. I can work with you. We are talking about strategic partnership. Your number one partnership, I told you, is your partnership with God. Yes. When you decide to partner with God for effective transformations. Yes. And this is what he did. God said, no, you've made a mistake. Speak to the bones. And say unto these bones, you dry bones, you shall live again. And I want you to prophesy upon every situation around you. That's what I want you to do. No matter how dry they appear, the ministry might be struggling. But you can speak into that ministry. And say that this ministry shall live again. again. Your health might be failing you. But you, shall, you can speak to your health. And say you shall live again. Look at somebody and say there shall be a renewal. Look at somebody and say there's going to be a turnaround. No, I don't think you're ready. Look at somebody as a neighbor. There's going to be a turnaround. Okay. I, I, maybe my accent is too heavy for you. Um, you know I'm, I'm, I'm an African. I, I don't want to speak like you. Speak the way you guys speak is fine. I want to speak the way I speak. So you have to try. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, there's going to be a turnaround. Turn can you say with your British accent for me? I'm not British. <laughs> no British here. <laughs> there is going to be a turnaround. Say it again. <laughs> there is going to be a turnaround. There is going to be a turnaround. <laughs> there is going to be a turnaround. Where are you from? Spain. Spain. Okay, so speak with a Spanish accent for there's going to be a turnaround. It's going to be a turnaround. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastico. Fantastico. There is going to be a turnaround and what God is saying is that this turnaround is not going to happen until you speak it Hallelujah. God was saying to, oh I, I wish there was another night do you know I'm saying that I, had, I would have spoken to you about plugging into a higher voltage the Bible says that and let me read from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 9 from the verse number 15 
Uh, and the Lord spoke into the ears of Samuel the day before Saul came, saying, verse 16, Tomorrow about this time I will send you a man out of the land of Benjamin that you shall anoint him to be captain over my people. From the verse number 17. And when Samuel had seen, Saul had, Samuel had seen Saul coming, um, Saul asked Samuel, Can you please direct me to the house of the prophet? So, technically, somebody can be a powerhouse child of God. And when you see them, you can't identify them. Samuel was the primus, premier prophet on the land. And yet was not recognizable. It means that the anointing is not in cassocks. You can wear cassock and be oilless. Okay, let me rewind and press play. The anointing can be on somebody and when you see them you can't tell because the anointing is not shrouded in cassocks or stuff first Samuel chapter number 10 I read from the verse number 1 and Samuel picked a vial of oil and put it upon the head of Saul and kissed him and said go to the chapter number 10 read this one and and, and then Samuel picked a vial of oil and put it upon the head of um, Samuel picked a vial of oil and put it upon the head of Saul and said and kissed him and said is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance is that what is written there uh -huh. so although he has picked a vial of oil poured it upon his head kissed him and said that God has anointed you to be captain over his people check the account if you go to the verse number from the verse number five downwards, the Bible says that, and he said, When you meet the prophets, although I've poured oil on you, you won't have change. The oil does not guarantee change. But when you meet the prophet, the spirit of the prophet shall come upon you. You shall prophesy with them, and you shall be turned to another man. And so it means that your transformation is tied to your you speaking. He said, they are prophesying, you shall speak with them. And when you speak with them, there shall be a change. So people are running after red oil, blue oil, green oil, pink oil. They don't know that transformation is not in the color of the oil. Hey. Oh. It's, not after, it's not in that. When the oil is poured, you, shall, you have to speak also. And once you speak, you shall be turned. <laughs> into another man you want to pray are you ready for this you want to go before god i want you to speak to your dry bones speak to your dry bones speak to your dry bones i want you to prophesy upon the situation whatever you need god to work the rim maybe you want god to show up in bristol you want to pray to god that god i prophesy on the city of bristol let your glory fall let revival grip the city of bristol one more time lift up your voice with me begin to prophesy upon your situation maybe you need healing prophesy maybe you need deliverance prophesy maybe you need a turnaround prophesy 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 come on prophesy 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 lift up your voice and prophesy Oh, come on, lift up your voice. Begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. Speak to your situation. Shall these bones live? Shall these bones live? Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Let your voice. I see a turnaround. I see a turnaround. Transformation will come to you lift up your voice and begin to pray come on let your voice be lifted up let your voice be lifted up let your voice be lifted up oh yeah dada busha le granda basuke le bedeya le grande de 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 busha yada lift her up for me lift her up Lika da bo shoda sadada. I want you to stop praying. 
I see the Lord moving in a very unique way. Lift up your voice and pray. Whatever you need a transformation the ring. The Lord will meet you, but you need to prophesy it. The Lord will visit you, but you need to prophesy it. Lift up a word of prophecy. 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 Up a word of prophecy. Shall these bones live? Thank you, Jesus. 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 Can I get you to do something? I want you to hold somebody, just one person. Just one person. Any grace that God has poured on you for divine takeoff, any delay, I'm going to come and minister to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hold somebody's hand. I want you to look into the eyes if you can. Look into the eyes and do not be intimidated by the, uh, you know what I will add. Don't allow the makeup, the eye extensions, the weave ones to intimidate you. The lashes or the shadow. Sometimes it can be intimidating, but don't. Fret not yourself <laughs> because of the extension. If the hair is becoming bald, don't be intimidated. It happens sometimes. <laughs> Look into the eyes and say, neighbor, are you ready to pray for me? Say, I just need a push. Are you ready to pray for me? Can you be my strategic partner tonight? Ask your neighbor, can you be my strategic partner tonight? What answer are you getting? Oh, please, get an answer for me. Is that an answer you are getting? Agreed to be your strategic partner? Okay, this is the prayer. Sometimes, for me, I'm, I'm a student of the Bible. And the Bible says, whatever thing two or more people shall agree upon in touching shall be given. So most of the time, what God is waiting for or waiting on is your agreement with another believer. So even as you've touched, you are praying that God, I'm ready for the next level. You've operated in this zone for far too long. You know, some of you, I, I, I met with a pastor and the pastor was telling me that when he is seeing something and he, he, God gives him a word to even say as a prophecy, it comes truncated. As in, he can see, but he's not seeing clearly. And it's been like that for a long time. It's a level that you've been operating in. Maybe you need to go up. And today that is what you are praying. Maybe there is a ceiling. When it comes to your breakthroughs or your business, there is a ceiling. You get there and you can't go beyond. And today you want to pray. Your career, there is a ceiling. God, I want, I am praying that you push my neighbor to the next level. That is the prayer you are praying. The next level, the next dimension, the next layer. Lift up your voice and pray for your neighbor. The next level. 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 Oh Kadabasha. Legranda da da da. Legrande de de busha da 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 ba. Holy Ghost. Lift up your voice. The next level. Leave his hands and lift up your hands. Shada da boshayada. The next level. The next level. The next level. Oh Jesus.
bring him to me. The next level. Lift up your voice. The next level. The next level. The next level. The next level. Lift up your voice. The next level. The next level. The next level. You want to pray to God. The next level. Holy Ghost. The next level. 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 Come on, let your voice be lifted. Let your voice be lifted. Hallelujah. Can you leave the hand of your neighbor? Leave the hand of your neighbor. And I want you to pray for yourself. Lift up your right hand. Lord, lead me to the next level. That should be your prayer. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Can I get every hand lifted up? Every hand. Good. This is better for me. I want every hand lifted. Can I get every hand lifted? And watch what God is going to do. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit of God. Lead up or show the sekada kadaya. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ah. How many of you have Bibles? Lift up your Bible with me. Lift it up. Lift up your Bible. Say, Lord Jesus. Any word of promise. If you, even if it's electronic, lift it. Any word of promise in your word for my life. As I lift up my voice, I claim, I take it, I claim the provisions, I claim the declarations. Your word says, and you bless them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish your earth and subdue it. These are the words from me. I pray right now for fruitfulness, for multiplication. Wherever I go, wherever I stand, cause me, O oh God, to multiply. The enemy cannot take away from me, cannot steal from me. I will rise, I will shine, for my light has come. In the name of Jesus, put your hands together. I just needed to, for you to make that confession. It's very important. Hallelujah. The Lord told me he's raising great people. It doesn't matter whether you are in this church or not, but as long as you are here, you are a part of them. You are part of the people God is raising. God is raising great people to affect not just England, but to affect their generation. Amen. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, as I lift up my voice and as I begin to pray, thank you, Jesus. I want, I want us to do this. You are going before God. This is very important to me. Thank you, Jesus. Very simple prayer. That as God is raising, yes, as they sing, when the saints are marching in, I want to be in their number. You want to pray that as God is lifting great men. How many of you are? Lift up your right hand with me. It's a, it's a simple prayer I want you to pray. The only revelation about giving that people don't have, the only revelation about giving that people don't have, is that people think that you have to have to give to God, but God doesn't need you to have before you give to him. God wants you to decide to give. 
check it out the bible says he gives seed to the sower so you have to qualify in his presence as a sower to receive seed so it means that god gives a man to give back to him so the moment the man thinks i'm a sower god says okay now get a seed that is why i find it very difficult that there are people when they hear about money they coil anytime you hear that money is being called in a service god is looking for sowers so if i were you i would make myself ready to receive seed when i was growing up one of the very few countries i visited was italy and an old italian man gave me a proverb which translates you cannot work in the perfumeria and smell bad <laughs> there is no way you can work in the perfume or cologne factory and smell bad there is no way god will make you a sower for you to be hungry you can't be a sower who is hungry i'm just praying that god is raising multi-millionaires lift up your right hand just, i'm just praying i i don't need you to do anything i just want us to pray god should prepare men and women who are going to be kingdom pillars kingdom financiers the muslims one muslim can build a whole mosque and say everybody go and worship there christians are building mansions muslims are building mosques and we are complaining why christianity is going down and islam is rising we don't have our priorities right are there people who want to be kingdom financiers I, I when i was that was what god was telling me i want to raise millionaires to push my kingdom Amen. lift up your right hand with me everybody under the sound of my voice spirit of god say lord jesus, lord jesus. find a way to direct blessings upon me find a way to lift me up find a way to open doors find a way to open supernatural doors for my life bring me contacts and connections bring me the favor the bible says your blessings maketh a man rich and he adds no sorrow to it we pray in the name of jesus that let the blessing of the heavens fall on our lives in the name of Jesus lift up your voice with me and begin to pray oh come on come on I wish you could pray I wish you could pray lift up your voice I wish you could pray. Your, right, your hand, right hand lift, lift it up. Anytime God wants to bring financial breakthroughs, he requires a financial input. Yes. Lift up your right hand. I just want people who are saying that you want to be, you want to make yourself available as a sower. So that, and, and try my God if he will not bring you seed. Did you hear what I said? Yes. I want people who want to put my God on trial. And see if it will not bring you seed and beyond. There are ministers and ministries and business people and, and, and career people who are expecting to go up. I am telling you, at, and most of the time, you can never get up, and t especially financially, without making a financial commitment. So you read the book of Deuteronomy 11.1. 1, and the Lord your God shall bless you a thousand times more. 11.1. 1. 
Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 1. And the Lord your God shall bless you a thousand times more. And so most of the time it is what you give that will get a thousand times. So if somebody gives a pound it's normally a thousand times a pound. So if you want to be a millionaire what should be the seed? Which you are already. In the name of Jesus. I love you. I love you too much. I love you. For me, I love radical, ruthless, aggressive faith. Amen. Lift up your right hand. I want to pray with you. A few of you who can. Because you see, when it comes to these things, until you catch a revelation, you cannot be a part. Lift up your right hand. Let me pray. I don't want to give too much commentary. I just want to say that make yourself available. When God is looking for candidates to bring seeds to, make yourself available. I've told you, seed sowing does not start with the hands. It starts with the mind. A lot of people think you sow seed when you give physically. It starts with it. Once you make it, I'm a sower, I'm a giver. God gives seed to the sower. It means God has been looking around, looking for somebody that he should give to. Just that people are not available. If silver and gold are his, why do you think he will ask you for your change? It's because he wants to see if you are a master of the resource or the resource controls you. Whatever you can't part with will control you. And if you really want to move higher as a young man, as a young woman, as somebody who is aspiring for greater things, you should control finances. Nobody can serve God and mammon at the same time. Mammon is a God of money. It is either you serve one and use the other. That's what the Bible says. A lot of people want to use God for, for mammon. But you have to use mammon to please God. Right hand up. Father, in the name of Jesus, a few of us are ready for the status, for the elevation, for the heights that you want to take your people to. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Everybody here who is ready to be lifted. You said you are raising millionaires people that will finance your kingdom but sometimes for you to bring to us you need what we have so the other day the prophet asked the woman what do you have give me to eat first the woman should have said prof how can you be this mean this is my last the bible says that when the woman had given her last god visited what it means that the divine supply is always premised upon the human giving. I pray that as your people are ready to move to the next level, raise millionaires in our mess. Raise financial giants in our mess. Raise people, oh God, that will take over the economic landscape of our world. The real estate. Yes. Oh Jesus. God raise people in the in, in the sporting world raise people in 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 academia raise people in the financial sector raise people in the economic sector raise people in the ministry raise people raise people under the sound of my voice oh God lift them to those dimensions I bring you a word that will stand the test of time that God will elevate you that my God will exalt you that God will honor you that nothing can stop you from where God is taking you to whatever thing that has been fighting against your progress by the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of our words we come up against it now in the name of Jesus rise and shine rise and shine spirit of God everything that needs to be in this proper place let it come to you right now I pray that let things begin to galvanize themselves and align to your advantage things are falling in the proper places right now 
Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Spirit of God, I release a prophetic word over you. The same God who is able to bless exceedingly. May the Lord visit you. I pray that may the Lord bless you. May he honorably consider you. May his word over your life stand. May every prophecy that I've placed on you today manifest. You shall be the first and not the last. Above and not beneath. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall not wither. You shall be evergreen. Whatever you touch will prosper. Your ministry, your business, your health, your finances, you will prosper on every side. Your family, none of yours will cast their young. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate the ministry of Papa. What an awesome ministry. Church, let's honor Papa. Let's honor Papa. Let's honor Papa.